In this video, you'll learn how to make fresh homemade ricotta with just four simple ingredients. And here's the best part. It's ready in less than one hour, including straining time. Crunchy, creamy, like mildly sweet. The olive oil is like to die for. It's a home run. Add three cups of whole milk to a heavy bottom pot. Do not use ultra pasteurized milk. It won't work for homemade ricotta. It just doesn't curdle properly. Add one cup of cream. And then a pinch of salt. It's about a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay, so the next step is that we wanna bring this milk and cream and salt mixture to a boil. And it's really helpful if you have one of these, a digital thermometer, um, because the mixture has to heat up to about 200 uh, Fahrenheit, maybe 93 Celsius. But if you don't have one of these, it's totally fine. You could go by the visual cues, which is you're gonna see frothy bubbles around the side of the pot. You're gonna see bigger bubbles in the center. You don't want to aggressively boil this like you're making pasta or whatever. You just kind of want to like get it to that rolling boil, but um, you need it hot enough so that when we add the lemon juice, it's actually gonna curdle. While the mixture is heating up, make sure to stir it often with a wooden spoon. And what I like to do is I like to get in here and do this in a figure eight motion, okay? I'm going slow here so you can like see how I'm doing it. But the reason why we're doing this, okay, which is the most important, is because we don't want the bottom of the pan to scorch, okay? All of those sugars start to catch a little bit. And what this does is that breaks it up because the last thing that you want is scorched or slightly burnt ricotta because the taste is gonna be really, really bitter. Okay, so this now you can come see. You see all these bubbles? That's what we want, bubbles in the center. You have some frothiness on the side, okay? And then when you take the temperature, oops, 206, okay, so we're good. The last step, two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. So after adding the lemon juice, what's gonna happen is this mixture sort of curdles. So come on in here and look at what's going on. So if you can see right here and in the center, it's starting to break apart, okay? So the solids that we're gonna get, that's gonna be our ricotta, and what's left over the whey or the liquid in the pan, um, we're not gonna use. So once you see that separation, you don't wanna touch this, okay? You wanna sort of let it do its thing, let it curdle up. Um, but once that's finished, we're going to take the ricotta out of here and strain it. So what's left will be this beautiful, creamy, fluffy texture. One thing that's really important to look out for is that sometimes you're going to have like really big curds of ricotta and then other times you're going to have smaller ones, okay? It really doesn't matter. Just be on the lookout. They don't all have to be big or they don't all have to be small. This was something that like confused me when I first started because I got like little ones at first and then other days I got big ones. I'm like, what is this supposed to look like? So uh, when in doubt, just let your mixture sit. Um, for at least 10 minutes after adding the lemon juice. So you really give um, the, the mixture an opportunity to curdle. We're gonna let this ricotta drain for about 10 to 15 minutes. But I wanna show you the texture right now. Do you see this? It's super fluffy and delicate. It's definitely still watery, but it's something to pay attention to because as the time goes by, you're gonna see this texture become a lot more um, dry. The sneak a little taste. So good.
So the thing is, this ricotta is still warm, okay? But like pleasingly warm and it's fluffy and it's super creamy and it's just like actually melting in my mouth. And with the crunchy crostini, which this is sourdough crostini by the way, it's like a home run. So this is the leftover whey after the ricotta strains. You can actually reuse this, okay? It tastes a little tangy. Um, it does have a little salt in it. Go ahead and use it in bread baking. Excellent for sourdough bread, sourdough pizza, focaccia, that kind of thing. Or you could even use it in a smoothie. Here's another tip for you, your cheesecloth, okay? Don't throw it out. You can reuse it. Just wash this in mild soapy water, rinse it out, drape it over the back of a chair, and let it air dry. For more recipes and videos, visit thecleverCarrot.com.